So today's video is going to break down leasehold properties, the good, the bad and the ugly side to them and also why I chose to shoot this video without ironing my t-shirt. So if that sounds like fun or something you want to know about then make sure you smash the hell out of that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and sit back and enjoy. What's going on everyone, my name is Aaron aka The Anxious Investor bringing you weekly videos to help you invest in property or maybe even buy your first home without having to pay for it. Now as you know and as I say quite a lot the industry is riddled with some funky characters or selling value but here I'm selling nothing so let's jump straight into this video for leaseholds for you all and as usual timestamps will be running along the bottom with chapters so you can navigate to any part of the video that you want. So let's begin with what is a leasehold. So a leasehold property essentially means that you own the property but not the land that is built on. This is owned by the freeholder. And as you may know, a lot of houses when you purchase them, you generally probably see the term freehold. And essentially this means that you own the land and also the home on top of it. But leaseholds don't include the land. Now when you have a leasehold property, you can essentially occupy that property for as long as the lease allows you. And this could be months or it could be years, depending upon the leaf, leaf? depending upon the length of the current lease. Now the length of the lease can be as long as 9,000 years, as one of my favorite places that I visited was the Guinness factory, which shows a lease of 9,000 years, which is pretty long. But they can also be very short too, and the shorter the lease, the more difficult is you will get when trying to get a mortgage, which moves me nicely over to the next part of the video, short leases. So a short lease is often around 80 years or less and as you approach closer to 70 years you're likely going to find more difficulties finding suitable mortgages or at least competitive rates which is why as a general rule of thumb at least for myself when I'm investing in property I don't even entertain any leases close to 80 years and the reason for this is some lease extensions can be quite costly so you really need to have some idea about how much that will cost and factor that into your calculations when purchasing. Now if you want to learn how to calculate rough costs for how much it costs to extend a lease, what I've done is I've put a resource in the description down below which will help you calculate rough costs so please do check that out. And also a good point worth noting here is that if you do live in a property for two years you're actually entitled to extend your lease but again with all lease extensions make sure you speak to a solicitor and also the landlord and freeholder about extending it. And also if you're thinking about how do I know how long a lease is well there's a few quick ways that you can find this out. The first is obviously speak to the solicitor when you're going through the purchase and the second is to speak to the freeholder directly and the third is via land registry. Now should you avoid all short lease properties as I mentioned earlier? Well not always as there's actually potentially a lot of money to be made from them but before I tell you how I need you to destroy the hell out of that like button like it's upset you and let the YouTube gods know that this video is giving you some value, it's helping you out and hopefully it can help other people out too. Now as I may have scared you about short leases earlier, there are actually some very savvy investors out there who only buy properties with short leases simply to extend them and flip them on and as a result of this they end up making a lot of money. However, it's not something that I've actually tried personally as I already tend to find myself spreading myself a little too thin but whenever I do stumble across maybe a leasehold property on an auction pack or via agent emails, I do have a quick look at what is the cost to extend this and work out the calculations. So if it's something you're interested in, then definitely consider it because you know how I talk a lot about adding value to properties to either refinance or flip, depending upon your goals. Well, this is a perfect way to add value. If you get good at calculating the cost and you see an opportunity where you can purchase a property with a short lease, knowing that a simple extension to that lease could add more money than it costs you to extend that lease, then it could be a great tidy little strategy to have in your arsenal to hopefully help you make some money. Plus, you could also potentially do this without buying it, which is pretty neat, right? Remember my video here on assisted sales? Well, if you link this strategy with assisted sales, it could be onto a winner because you haven't got to buy it. And finally, what I want to talk to you about today is the costs associated with leasehold properties. So essentially, there's three main costs associated, which many people don't actually factor into the calculations, especially with buy to lets. Now, the first is admin charges, the second is service charges, and the final one I'll speak about is ground rent. And what I've also done is put a reference down below which explains this in a lot more detail. So please do check that out as a lot of the information that I'm going to speak about is explored in a lot more depth. So let's begin with admin charges. There's a few fees associated with this and these fees are associated either when you sell, buy or do in the ownership. And these may include stuff like consent for example. If you want to run a business from your home you may need to pay admin charges for that. Or maybe you want to remortgage as well. Again you may need to let the freeholder know but make sure you check that link out below because it gives you a few more. Next up we have service charges which 
differ depending upon the property, but these are costs you will pay each year to maintain the upkeep of the building as a whole or the communal areas. So before you ever think about buying a lease or property, you need to ensure that you factor in all of these costs and put them into your calculations. Now, finally, ground rent charges. The ground rent is basically a payment for renting the land space. Basically, you're occupying the space with a property and you need to pay rent for that particular land. Now, a quick note with this is to ensure that you check with your solicitors about looking at the terms as landlords can increase the ground rent, as landlords can increase this each year at their discretion, depending upon how agreements and contracts are written up. And that, my friends, is 